Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Actually, have a new one. And yes, Jay Carly. Um, I am actually gonna try that that drink, that that wine. Um, actually, it was kind of funny when I went in the wine store. That was what I was gonna get. But then you had these people that was sent there selling all these different types of wines and one person like tried to sell me a drink that was just well way too strong for me and somewhere along the lines I just kinda like lost track of it. But I am actually gonna sit there and try that though. It's good stuff. Um You know, this episode I I, I kinda had some gripes with it. I did. I had some gripes with it. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna talk about her first. We all know who I'm talking about. Stella. Stella is that type of woman that, yes, her heart is in the right place. Her heart is in the right place, but nine times out of ten is one of those situations where it's like, um, no one asks you for your opinion. No one asks you for your opinion, and no one asks you for your, your judgmental comments. Okay? She comes at Jordan, and the first thing she's sitting there saying is, How'd you let all this happen? I was like, sweetheart, it's her, it's her life and her marriage. Like, I, I'm trying to keep this as PG-13 as possible, and this woman vexes the living hell out of me. Okay? First of all, she comes in, she starts off by sitting there saying, Well, why is you allowing TJ to sit there and see that man? You mean his biological dad? That, um, sorry, the last time I checked, was none of your damn business? So I was like, wow, okay, that was... <laughs> that really just vexed at me right then and there. It was just like, are you kidding me? But then she's all like, ah, oh, you know, what's going on with your marriage and stuff like that? I was like, sweetheart, like, are you kidding me right now? What about your love life? Don't you have a love life to focus on or to, to find or, or something? <laughs> so, so she starts in with that. Now, as I was there just getting annoyed and getting vexed and Probably drinking way more than I should. Jordan said something that I thought was kind of interesting. When Jordan was like, listen, your whole little, you know, you're trying to get in between Curtis and Portia. You know, let, let Curtis move on with his life. Now, I thought that was pretty interesting because at this point, Jordan knows that there's something going on between Portia and Curtis. And, you know, I was really wondering what the reaction is going to be like. You know, what was the reaction? Did she know? Was she going to confront her or anything like that? But she already knew. She already knew. And so, she's not going to take it in a way where I thought that she was going to take it as. Like, she was just going to be just, you know, blown up at Portia. Like, oh, you're going after my man and yada, yada, yada. Don't get me wrong. There's still time for that. But I think that's less likely seeing that she already knows and she's just like her marriage is already over. Now, you know, Stella, honestly to tell you the truth, again, just needs to mind her own damn business. Okay? She just needs to mind her damn damn business. Um I I just really do not like a busybody. And granted, while she was in the there, you know, being a busybody in Jordan's life. She was also kind of being a busybody in TJ's and Molly's life. Oh, just make sure, you know, when you're doing all this stuff that, you know, you keep what's important is important. I was like, sweetheart, they didn't ask for your advice. Once again, they got this. They're good. Like, what are you... Oh, my goodness. Especially when, um, you know, Molly was like, oh, they was like, oh, it's been too long. You know, we got to sit there and see you soon. I was like, no, mm-mm. Stop. Just, just stop. Because I honestly tell you the truth, the minute that she's came the minute that she's came back or come back, 
to be honest, been annoying the hell out of me. Now I know some people like her, they love her and stuff like that for different reasons and stuff like that. And listen, I'm not knocking you. I'm really not. I know that she's not all bad. I know that she's not all bad. But certain things that she does, I'm not a fan of. And she's been doing it more and more and more. And uh, since she's not taking that trip back to London or whatever the hell she was from, she's... <sighs> I'm just going to be annoying the hell out of me. I'm trying to be nice, but I really, really can't. I just, I can't stand her. I really cannot stand her. I liked her when she was with Mike, and she has some nice moments every now and then. But nine times out of ten, she just tends to just be a busybody, you know? Just... One of those people that just comes in and just starts being very judgmental. And I can't stand that. And, um... Unfortunately, I want to sit there and say that... That, um... Well, hopefully I don't have to sit there and talk about her again, but, um... Well... Clearly, since I don't get what I want... Fortunately, I'm probably going to have to wind up talking more about her, so... Yeah. Now I want to get another scene out the way. I get another scene out the way. <sighs> Maxie and Bobby. Listen, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people liked their scenes and they were really nice and they were really touching and all sorts of. You know, I'm not even going to sit there and say this is us because. No. But I'm pretty sure it's nice and sweet and all that good stuff. But to be honest, those scenes didn't really mount up to anything because Maxie didn't tell her the plan. Which is odd because she was part of the plan as far as being the person to deliver the baby or something or I don't know. She was part of she was part of the plan or something. Yeah, she was part of the plan. But for some odd reason, now Bobby can't know the rest of the plan. So um, Bobby can't know the rest of the plan. Uh, Britt can't know the rest of the plan. Spinelli didn't really know any part of the plan. And so this whole time when she's sitting there talking about missing her baby and, you know, what, you know, is the baby going to be well and, you know, it's, you know, favorite toy, this, that, and the third. And it's this nice little sweet moment. I'm just like, <sighs> okay. All right. Yep, still doing this. Okay. And that's, that's, I, I'm pretty sure they talked about some other stuff, but to be honest, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really bother to pay attention. I just feel like, you know, listen, if you're not going to sit there and bother to put hair on a plan and them sit there and talk about it, then I'm just like, why the hell should I actually bother to care? Now, to be honest, I have a theory. And this literally just came to me as I was sitting there doing this. The reason why she has not told a lot of people to plan like Brett, Nelly, and Bobby is because, you know, the actress had brain surgery. And so she's going to be out for a while. Um, and I was looking at her Instagram story. Her and, um, you know, the woman that played Lulu, you know, they were in the car talking and stuff like that. But yeah, she's going to be out for a while. So I feel like if she would have told them the plan, then they would have probably had more interactions and, you know, she's not going to be there. So that's probably why, you know, she's not really putting people on the plans because they would be sitting there checking up on her and yada, yada, yada. So I just feel like maybe that's the reason why that she hasn't been telling them the plan. And I, I really hope, I really hope that that's the reason because to be honest... Otherwise, it would just be stupid. It would just be stupid. I'm sorry. No. Screw that. I'm not sorry. It would just be stupid. Um, yeah, so their whole scene was just absolutely pointless. Went absolutely nowhere and just a complete and utter waste of time. For me. Another waste of time for me. Um, I mean, if you liked it, that's cool. Nina, 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 Nina. And Jax. 
You know, when Jax got off the phone with Michael, and Michael was like, listen, you know, I only did it because you literally forced me. You blackmailed me into doing this. So, you know, it is what it is. But as far as me and you are, are concerned, I want no parts of you. And he hung up the phone. And Jax just kind of stood there like, yep, I made my choice. I made my bed. And so, there's one point where after Nina has her visit with Wiley, she comes over Jax's place. And, you know, Nina's like, listen, what did you do, you know, like, so that way I can give visitation rights with, with Wiley and stuff. And, you know, um, you know, Jax was like, oh, I just reminded him, you know, he gave her some BS story. And he basically was like, you know, I did this so I could try to make up for the fact that I didn't tell you about it now. And something that Nina said that I was just like, okay. When Nina was like, you know, I don't really, Nina was like, I don't owe you anything and, you know, we're, we're like square or whatever. But when she was like, I don't owe you anything or something along those lines, she was like, I don't owe you anything. I was like, wow. Jax. So this is the woman that you practically you know, threw away your family for. Her. You threw away your family for a neat... Don't owe you anything. Uh, what do these people, what do these men actually see in Nina? What do they see in her? I'm not sitting there saying that she is, you know, like, ugly or anything like that. But, um, I just don't know what to see in her. But, you know, when, um, you know, Nina was sitting there talking about Nixon Falls and how, you know, she may not, you know... She said that she doesn't really have a home in Port Charles and stuff like that. You know, like, yeah, my grandson's out here, but, you know, she was all like, oh, I, I needed to leave to heal or whatever. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, you know, Jax was like, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be staying here or whatever. Like, dude, this whole thing with you and Nina is over. She just said that she doesn't owe you anything, okay? She's not even living out here. She's just coming here to see her grand... Her grandchild. Uh, yeah, at some point, it's, it's going to hit Jax. It's going to hit Jax. He's going to realize that he gave up his... Especially when Carly finds out. Carly finds out. And Jax finds out. I mean, um, Jocelyn finds out. It's going to hit him. It's going to hit him. And uh, <laughs> I can't wait for that. I really can't wait for it. Listen, the thing is... I like Jax, for the most part, okay? I liked him for the most part. Now, granted, what he did with Michael, he definitely lost my respect. But up until the point, I like Jax. I didn't sit there and think that he was a terrible character. Um, and he needed somebody to sit there and rival Sonny and stuff, you know, as far as Brenda and Carly and... Well, I don't know how many other women that they actually shared. Oh, Sam. Um, you know, he needed a good rival, so... Okay, fine. I never really had too much of an issue with him. Um, at this point, I'm just like, bro, when all the smoke comes back to you and you realize what you gave up for that thing, uh, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day for me. And probably anyone else who doesn't like Jax. Now, after Nina finished visiting Wiley and stuff like that, and, you know, Nina pretty much had to hold her tongue a lot with Carly. Here's the thing. And I say this clearly be not being a Nina's fan, okay? What Nina did was terrible, it was stupid, and I felt like it was somewhat malicious to some extent. You know, especially when Wy when Willow was sent there there was one point where Willow was sent there talking to Wiley about, you know, calling herself her mo her mother and stuff like that and Nina just having that look. So I felt like some of that wasn't exactly an accident. But with that being said, chalk it up to half accident, half judgmental call. Okay? At the end of the day, yeah, she is Wiley's grandmother. And, you know, Carly... 
I get that she does not like Nina. Hell, I don't like her. Okay. But, um... I, f I felt like in a lot of ways, like, Nina kind of had to sit there and still fight her. Like, fight Carly and hold back her tongue from saying what she really wants to say to Carly. And, um... I don't know, in some sort of way, I felt like Carly kind of took advantage of the situation, and we all know how much I don't like Nina, but I, I felt like I wasn't feeling Carly in that in that moment, to be honest, but after Nina left, and, um, you know, Carly was asking, you know, Michael, like, what did Jax do, and Michael not really giving an answer, Michael was like, listen, what are you doing about this whole mob business? Are you stepping down from the business now that Jay, Jay, um, Jason's back? Like, what's what, what's your plans? You, you gonna step down, right? And you know, Carly was like, I don't, I don't really have an answer for that. You know, it's not that simple. Yes, it is. It is that simple. Uh, besides Sunny, the five families, everyone knows that Jason, more or less, has been helping run the business for a while, so it's not as though you gotta sit there and be like, oh, well, listen, guys, just to let you know, um, I, I know I kinda stepped in for a little bit, but, uh, yeah, you know, that that guy, Jason, he, he's gonna be, you know, you remember him, right? He, yeah, yeah, so he's gonna be coming back, and it's not like it needs to be, like, another meeting or anything like that. So I don't understand why she's sitting there trying to act like, you know, with, with Michael, like, oh, well, it's not that simple. No, it is that simple. And of course, Michael sits there and reminds Carly how, you know, much of a bad idea it is for her to run the business. You know, Jocelyn, Avery, um, Donna, you know, all, all those kids and stuff like that. I'm just sitting there looking at the situation like, Carly, the fact that you didn't give a straight answer to Jax, and you're not giving a straight answer to Michael, I think you need to be real honest with yourself about why you want to run the business. Now, of course, I said that, you know, she wants to run the business because, one, the power, two, to be closer to Sonny. But I just feel like she needs to sit there and own up to why she wants to do it. In the beginning, yeah, we understood why, but after that, like, sweetheart, what, what, what are you doing now, you know? So, I thought that was a good question. Of course, Carly just did not bother to answer because... I don't know. I guess we just don't like bothering to answer questions anymore now, so I, I don't know. Now let's get to this other portion of the story that I just... <sighs> See, the thing for me, and this is the whole Willow and chase scenes and Brooklyn, and I just... I find it so difficult to get... I'm finding it so difficult to get it emotionally invested, or at least in this episode. Because it just comes across as just dreary. He's been dying now for about like seven days or two weeks or something like that. And it's just like, I've made my, my, my thoughts clear about this. Is that one, I don't want Chase to die because I actually like Chase. Two, you know, if he dies, it's like Peter wins. And Peter's dead. And like, I don't feel that he should get a win that he's already dead. Like, I feel like it's just a win by default. Like, I just... I'm not really a fan of that. Um, they've been they've been doing this for a good minute. Like it seems like Fen has done everything but just pretty much given up. Now of course he talks to Chase. He's like, oh, I'm not done fighting yet and stuff like that. I was like, bro, I have not seen you in this lab like once. I don't know. I just I feel like, and that's not true, but I, I just feel like Fen just is at his end at this point and um. I feel like this is the way that they, they either want to go. Like, they want to go to this really slow, long, prolonged death. Or up into his death into the very last second. The very last 20 minutes. And then he's just going to miraculously find a cure. Or they're going to sit there and find one of those antidote things. Um, but I just feel like it's just... Like, they need to get to a point where this isn't just dragged out anymore. And especially with this whole wedding thing, it's like, alright, the man was, like, doing a wedding, just like, oh my god, are you serious? Like, we're really just, we're just, just dragging it out to the end. So now you got Brooklyn in there, and, you know, you got Liz, and, by the way, there was one point where it seemed like, 
Liz and um, Finn were about to kiss because, well, I guess at this point they got to pair him up with, with someone. So, um, and, I mean, let's be honest, they're both single now. Um, but just this whole scene is a scene with Brooklyn talking to Chase, scene with Brooklyn, and they're talking to Willow, um, you know, just being supportive and stuff like that, and Willow just crying, and I, I just, it's like, it's like part of me wants to then get emotionally invested in this, but it's just like, it's just dragged on for far too long, and I'm just, I'm done, I just... I'm done, and it, it sucks because it just seems like either they're just going to let him die in a very slow death, and we're all just going to sit there and go through this, an, I don't want to sit there and annoying because I'm pretty sure I might only be the only, I might be the only person they may, that may actually be getting annoyed by this whole scene, but just this agonizing, sad, dreary death, or... Up until the end, the last minute, it's like 20 minutes, and that's pretty much what it is, is that, and I, I just, it's not to say that I don't care, I just want them to just get to a point, at some point, I get it, it's a soap opera, they kind of prolong stuff, but I feel like this guy has been dying for about like, I feel like it's been three weeks now, can we, you know what? Oh, and uh, TJ talks to Sean, which Sean does not want him. Because Sean pretty much told TJ that, you know, he didn't get parole. And that, you know, listen, you should stop visiting me so, you know, as much. Because, you know, what kind of relationship we're going to have. But TJ's like, no, I'm not hearing that. We're still father and son. And I want you in my life regardless. So, that's not going to happen. Um, now... Molly also comes to see um, Alexis. Now Alexis asks Molly to do her favor as far as getting some sort of records or whatever. Or some sort of documents or whatever. I'm not sure. She asked her for a favor because she wants to sit down and look into Sean's, um, you know, his court case and stuff like that. Because she's trying to figure out, like, why he got denied. Um, and so she asked Molly to sit down and look into it. Um... I'm not going to lie, half of that scene just kind of bored the loving hell out of me. But that, that part I do remember. Um, because, you know, she's sitting there talking to Sean and, you know, she's just trying to figure out, like, why did he get denied? Now, of course, we all know it has something to do with um, Nicholas because, um, you know, he's a dick. But um, she wants to then find out what's going on. I find these two stories interesting. Now that I sit there and think about it, that they're taking on very different roles to some extent. Like, Sonny and, um, you know, Alexis. Like, Alexis being in jail and whatever role that's going to be in. And Sonny's being Mike because I feel like at this point, if we if we look at fandom, I think it's, like, maybe 30% of the people that actually really like the story. And, like, everyone else is like, all right, bro, I'm just going to fast forward it till you get to being Sonny again. But I, I do find that kind of interesting. I think that's pretty much about it. <laughs> I think that's pretty much about it. Uh, again, once again, Stella just annoys the living hell out of me. And it's sad. It's really sad. Because when she left, I actually did start to like her. You know? And she comes back and she's just all sorts of annoying. Listen, I get that you are concerned. You care for your loved ones. You want them to do well. You want them to be happy. But there's a fine line between... You know, you want them to be well and happy and boundaries. And this woman seems like she has no boundaries whatsoever. And, you know, I admire stubbornness to an extent. But there's there's a fine line between stubbornness and you just cross that line. And Stella seems like she doesn't understand where a line starts at. She just keeps going off and off and off, on and on and on and on. And, and uh... I mean, for me, I just kind of just mute the damn TV after a while, but... Anyway, with that being said, I think that's about it. I'm pretty sure I probably missed one or two more things, but, um... <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I hope everyone had a great weekend. Uh, my weekend was great up until Sunday. Because I took the second shot. And, uh... 
you know, listen, always think it's always say it's personal choice. If you do get that second shot, just make sure that you take the next day off. Don't try to um don't 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 try to act like it's not gonna bother you, cause 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 it, it there's a good chance it will. There's a high good chance it will. And um yeah. Pretty much spent all day yesterday sleeping and um feeling like crap. Cause I thought that I was able to go and work. And I was wrong. But with that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what you thoughts are in the comment section below. See you in the next video.